Hey, I thought of shooting this video in the open today and let me show you where I'm shooting this video today. Ugh. Yes. Let's get started. I am recording this video right in the middle of a jungle and there's a river flowing. And I just realized that my voice is not that clear so I'll have to speak a bit loudly. I'm so sorry for that and I'll have to be a bit closer to the mic because of the uh, wind. Anyhow, let's get started with the Hubbard Humphrey Fellowship. Let's first of all talk about what are the benefits that you get. First, it covers your entire tuition fees of the universities that are registered. So I'll do one thing, I'll leave a list of the universities that are in this program and entire tuition fees gets covered. Second is that you get a maintenance allowance of approximately $1,900 till $2,400 depending on the area that you're living monthly. $1,900 to $2,400 monthly is the maintenance allowance that you get. Apart from that, you also get a one-time settlement allowance. So once you move to United States, a one-time settlement allowance is also what you get. Third is it also covers accident and sickness coverage. Let's suppose, God forbid, you got sick or met an accident, that would also be covered. Apart from that, it also covers your training cost if you require English training before joining the university, it will also cover that, which I presume none of us will be because you're watching this video in English. It also covers your air flight tickets from India till United States, which is like the scholarship is amazing. And apart from that, it also covers any field trip. Let's suppose you have to go on any field trip. Any expense regarding that will also be covered in this scholarship. Okay, one more thing you need to understand that it is for only non-degree programs. So if you're planning to go for a degree course, no, it's not covered. Okay, you know, it started raining. It's raining now and I can see the sun. Anyhow, yeah, sorry. So it only covers non-degree courses. If you're planning to go for bachelor's and master's, no, that's not covered. But what are the courses that you can go for? You can go for Educational Administration, Planning and Policy, Finance and Banking, Higher Education and Administration, Agricultural and Rural Development, Communications and Journalism, Economic Development, Human Resource Management, Law and Human Rights. Okay, I had to come back and say, it's raining and bright sunshine is out. This is a beautiful place. You have to come to Kashmir, guys. Anyhow, let's... I'm getting deviated. I'm so sorry. That's not ideally how my video looks like, but I'm just recording this video right in the middle of a heaven. Sorry. It also covers teaching of English as foreign language, technology and policy management, public health policy and management, public policy analysis and public administration, substance abuse, education, treatment and prevention, tracking in persons policy and prevention, and urban and regional planning. And yeah, the list is extremely wide. So you can go for all these courses, but these will be non-degree courses. What's a good thing about it? You get 200 scholarships. So getting the scholarship might just be a bit easier because we have other United States scholarships. We have the Nehru Full Pride Scholarship, which is absolutely amazing. Just that the deadline has passed, but it's an amazing scholarship. So if you're watching this video after four or five months, I would actually recommend you to check out that video because yes, that can be an amazing uh, scholarship for you, but the number of seats for that are not that great. For this, there are 200 seats, which is actually really good. Okay, let's now talk about the eligibility criteria. So the first eligibility criteria is you belong to these countries, Sub-Saharan Africa, Europe or Eurasia, Middle East, North Africa, East Asia, Pacific, South and Central Asia and Western Hemisphere. So ideally, it covers the entire world. You're also required to have an undergraduate degree and there's a catch, you need to have five years of full-time work experience. Five years. You also need to have a limited or no prior experience in United States. And apart from that, you need to demonstrate leadership qualities, a record of public service and community and English language ability. Let's now talk about the selection process. So it's a five step process. First, you apply, make your application and then your application gets reviewed. And if it is good, you'll be called for an interview and your application would be forwarded to the IIE Washington office. 
then the Institute of International Education, the IIE, will be checking your eligibility. So if you're eligible, they'll check all those things, uh, the eligibility criteria that I talked about. And if it is found that yes, you're eligible, second step is done. Then CRC will do its complete screening. What happened? Okay, there's a big cloud now and I'm pretty sure it will start raining so I'll have to be a bit quick so yes uh, the the CRC I'm so sorry I had to check because I lost the track of thoughts yeah so I was saying CRC will then check your eligibility criteria and uh, you will also be called for an interview once you're done with that approval of J William Fulbright foreign scholarship board will be taken now this board has a final authority as to who will be getting the scholarship and who will not be getting the scholarship. So now this is the point where it will be decided will you either be getting a scholarship or not. And finally the FSD committee will be placing the students in the registered universities or colleges. So it's actually a very good scholarship. If you do have the work experience I would actually recommend you to go ahead with it. There are some stats I would want to share with you guys. 46% of the alumni have developed national policies. Yes. 46% people have ended up going on to develop national policies of a country. 61% people end up going back home and work with the government in a direct capacity or an indirect capacity. 80% of the alumni surveyed introduced new best practice and innovative management methods into their organization back home. So, so for those who want to go ahead and work in management but do not specifically want to go for an MBA, this might just be the best thing that you can go for. Okay, now I'll have to stop recording because it has started to rain. I'm sitting beneath a tree but it is raining from this side. I don't know if you can see this or not but it's raining. It is. So with that we'll end this scholarship and I'm pretty sure I might just record a few more videos here because it's amazing.